with title Point of Care Ultrasound Fast and E Fast. Stop on the there. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning uh, uh, before I start uh, can I double check uh, can everyone uh, see my slides and also can hear my voice everyone can hear my voice yes that's loud and clear all right thank you So, uh, so as for today, uh, I'm Dr. Muhammad Nazrusha bin Muhammad Juni, the uh, emergency physician and lecturer from emergency department suspect and lecturer from uh, Kulia or Medicines, UIA. Uh, today, I will be sharing with you uh, to, uh, regarding fast and e fast. So, this is mainly about ultrasound. So we will have like one hour uh, to uh, see in detail about the ultrasounds. Okay. As for the introductions, so we all know that ultrasound is widely used in the world uh, currently. It is mainly a diagnostic tool used basically uh, uses the principle of ultrasound wave, informing the images, and by doing that, it assists in diagnosis and treatment plan. So, as in the medical world today, a uh, lot of ultrasound being used, especially in emergency department, uh, as a crucial instrument. For that, we can diagnose the patient uh, more accurately and in a faster way. By doing that, after diagnosing the patient, we can follow up this patient with further treatment plans. These are some of the examples of ultrasound machine that are available in Malaysia. So as, a, as for the basic principle behind the ultrasound, uh, ultrasonography uh, study, basically, a uh, human hearing system can only detect the sound wave within the frequency of 20 to 20,000 hertz. So beyond the limit of 20,000 hertz, basically human hearing, we cannot able to detect the other sound frequency. And for all the basic things regarding other sound, Ultrasound wave does not does exist naturally, and then some animals are able to hear ultrasonic or even infrasonic wave. Like in this picture, some of the animals can detect the ultrasound and infrasonic wave compared to the human hearing that can only detect it from the range of twenty to twenty thousand hertz of frequency. As for the principle of ultrasound. Ultrasound comprises of mechanical wave that can be transmitted through the different materials. So basically, it operates through the pulse echo principles. Here we can see the transducer at the left side of the image. It, it produces the wave, and then this wave will travel through the medium, and then it will, it will go to the certain objects. And then this object will further then reflect back the wave to the transducer, and this transducer will be will detect the uh, the wave again uh, and detect it as a, an image over the ultrasound machines. All right. So the transducer emit a sound wave, and this pulse travel to the tissue, giving rise to the reflected echoes, and then. Further, it will be converted into electrical signal which process to form an image, as I mentioned previously. Okay, in emergency department, 
basically we have several kind of transducers being used all right and then this transducer or the probe actually there's a it contains the piezoelectric crystals uh, this piezoelectric crystal actually it can change the electrical signal into the mechanical variation and vice versa so this transducer is very important tool in the ultrasound machine uh, to detect the images that we want to see and then this wave will travel by displacing the matter expanding and compressing the adjacent tissue and it will further generate an ultrasonic wave that is further propagated and impeded via reflection refraction or attenuation by the tissue it encounters okay these are the basic image regarding the sound wave propagation okay so as we can see here the transducer that contain the piezoelectric crystal it produces the wave through an incidence to the soft tissue and then this this wave will be reflected or refracted between the tissue or the muscles okay these are some kind of example of how the the wave produced by the ultrasound it reflect refract and also it attenuate right i think this uh, kind of uh, knowledge is basically we are already uh, seen in uh, or maybe we can we already studied it during our secondary schools basic ultrasound transducers so this are the three basic ultrasound transducers being used in other especially in emergency department first it is called as curvilinear transducer the second one will be the phase array transducer or well known as eco probe and the last one will be the linear transducer i will talk more on this kind of transducer in the next slides all right for the linear transducer so actually this transducer it emit the wave sound or frequency of 5 to 20 megahertz so this kind of transducer it has a more higher frequency but a less penetration of the image compared to the curvy linear and also the phase array it emit the wave sound of one to five megahertz and then by doing this it has a lower frequency compared to the linear probe or the linear transducer but it has a more deeper penetration compared to the, the linear probe so it's very important especially in emergency department to use the correct transducer on examining certain organs and doing some examinations some of the advantages of ultrasound it is basically non-invasive as we all know it does not produce any kind of radiation like x-ray ct scan all right so it's not invasive and then secondly it is highly feasible meaning it is widely available in most of the centers basically in the tertiary centers in the medical centers and then it is also versatile meaning this ultrasound we can actually recognize and we can detect a lot of uh, objects and also organs by doing the ultrasound examinations and then the other advantages of ultrasound is it is repeatable we can do the ultrasound as uh, as much as we want and then lastly it is rapid and also time saving procedures so it does not require a uh, longer time uh, to add, to detect some abnormalities by doing the ultrasound and then some of the disadvantages of ultrasound basically it does not view the actual images but rather newly formed images interpreted by the machine from the reflected ultrasound wave so it's just the image 
that be formed is the image that being reflected from the ultrasound wave. And then secondly, it is operator dependent. So usually the highly skilled ultrasonography or ultrasonographer will have a more, uh, I mean, they can detect the images more clearly and accurately. And the last one would be ultrasound is a high maintenance. So as we all know, ultrasound machine is quite expensive. The range of the price can be up to 200 to 500,000 ringgit Malaysia. And then even the transducer itself, if it's broken, uh, if you want to replace it, it might we might have to prepare some kind of money like 20 to 30,000 uh, K. Uh, of uh, Ringgit Malaysia to replace the transducer of the probe. And then regarding the focus bedside ultrasounds, so in emergency department, we use a lot of focus bedside ultrasound because of the advantages that I mentioned previously. It's rapid, non-invasive, versatile and repeatable. All right. So it's very important tool in emergency department in aiding for diagnosis and treatment of the patient. All right. And then ultrasound users in emergency department focuses on certain important aspects only, unlike the one performed by radiologists or obstetrician, which are more details. So what is focus? All right. So it is an abbreviation for point of care ultrasound. And then it refers to the practice of trained medical professional using ultrasound to diagnose the problem wherever a patient is being treated, whether that's in a modern hospital, an ambulance, or a remote village. So point of care ultrasound, basically, it focuses on certain areas that we want to examine by using the ultrasound. And then this focus, it enables the clinician to treat the patient faster, more accurately and in a non-invasive way at the point of care without relying on a trip to the radiology department. So we can use the ultrasound as the modalities, especially in emergency department, to examine the patient and to make a diagnosis. What about FAST? FAST is a focused assessment with sonography in trauma. So in FAST, Basically, is a bedside ultrasound examination that can be performed during resuscitation. So, in emergency department, we have a lot of unstable patients, the patient that come with hemodynamically unstable. So, we use the fast ultrasound in to perform during the resuscitation, especially during the trauma in the trauma cases. It says that in some study. Fast or focus assessment with sonography in trauma it is very highly specific in ruling the diagnosis for intra abdominal free fluids. Uh, and it is useful in the initial assessment of trauma patients to look for any intra abdominal organ injury. So, fast is very useful in detecting the intra abdominal free fluid in trauma patient. It is reported that the fast scan have an overall sensitivity ranging from 63 to 100%. So it's a very good tool in detecting the intra-abdominal free fluids. And the, the other thing about fast scan, it can demonstrate as little as 250 mils of fluid in peritoneal cavity, in which it is very useful in detect, detecting the abnormalities. And we, sh we should also be noted or know that the sensitivity of fast is lesser in the pediatric age group due to the organ distributions. What are the areas or the component in fast? So in general, there are four main areas that we do when we are doing the fast scan. Okay, so the four main areas is the right upper quadrant areas, 
as we can see here, it's designated by the, it's labeled by A. And then the second one will be the left upper quadrant, labeled by B. And then the third one will be C or suprapubic area. And then the last one will be D, the sub default area. And then before we start any bedside fast scan, basically we need to prepare the patient correctly. So the patient must be in the supine position or maybe in the trenelumbar positions. These are the two main positions that we can use before performing the fast scan. And then the choice of transducer is usually it's the curvilinear probe, as you can see here, or the face array probe. Okay, in fast bedside ultrasound, the interpretation of sonographic finding is either positive or negative only. Positive means there is some positive findings like intra-abdominal free fluids, and then the negative finding, we should remember that it does not exclude the intra-abdominal injury. So it is very important for us, especially in emergency department, to repeat the first scan examination in order to improve the sensitivity of the examinations. This is how the position of the lumbar compared to the supine position. We can also use this kind of position to, to do the fast scan. And then some of the indication of fast scan is actually first, if the patient comes with blood trauma, if the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable, the second one will be the penetrative trauma. Okay? But in penetrative trauma, in some studies, they mention that it is less sensitive compared to the blunt trauma because of the presentation of maybe some, care, some kind of air that may interrupt the images during the fast scan. And then the third one, the other indication for fast scan is the unexplained hypotension in patient in trauma. And then the last one will be the pregnant lady, trauma in pregnancy. These are the four main indications of doing the fast scan examinations. So what are you looking for in fast scan? There are two main things that we want to look in the fast scan. The first one will be the intraperitoneal hemorrhage. And then the second one will be the traumatic pericardial effusions. These are the two main things that we want to detect by doing the fast scan. These are the two main things that we want to to detect do, by doing the fast scan, uh, by doing this, we can detect the we can detect the intra-abdominal free fluids more accurately and faster. And by doing this, we can refer to the respective team earlier for further interventions. As I mentioned, these are the four main components in fast scan or the areas that we want to look for. Right upper corner, left upper corner, supra pubic, and also the sub default view. Remember, in fast scan, there are some disadvantages. So, in some of the cases, we obtain some suboptimal images due to the patient conditions, like patient is obese or having subcutaneous emphysema. Sometimes it may interrupt the images. And then by doing the fast scan, we cannot detect or we cannot differentiate the type of fluids. Either it's a blood, a cytic fluid, or maybe a urine. And then limited, this fast scan is limited for detection of retroperitoneal fluid, meaning in the patient with the retroperitoneal injury, the free fluid that present, we might, we might not be able to detect it earlier. And maybe we cannot detect it uh, until we do the CT scan. So this is some of the disadvantages of doing the fast scan. 
And then the other thing is it can miss up to one third of intra-abdominal injuries in blunt trauma. So it is very important for us, especially the doctors in emergency department to do the repeat, repeat examination of fast scan in detecting the uh, intra-abdominal free fluids. Okay, this is how the orientation of ultrasound images or the probe. Okay, so this is called the left images. It shows the transverse orientation or the horizontal orientation of the transducer towards the object. And then the right side of the images, it shows the longitudinal or vertical orientation of the transducer towards the object. You can see it will form a different images over the ultrasound machine. And then the other thing about the orientation of ultrasound images or probe, we should also able to do the longitudinal view or vertical view as mentioned in these images, all right? And then the transverse view or the horizontal view in these images, okay? We can see there are different interpretation of the ultrasound images by doing the longitudinal or the transverse view. And the, the other thing about the ultrasonography is we should also uh, know about the terminology that we usually use in ultrasound. So there are four different types of terminology used in ultrasound. First is hyperechoic. As we can see here, the first image is hyperechoic. It's more ecogenic compared to the surrounding structures. It's more brighter. Okay. The second one is hypoechoic. Okay. It's more darker. All right. It's less ecogenic compared to the surrounding structures. The third one is isoechoic, meaning it has the same ecogenicity as the surrounding structures. We cannot detect it properly. And then the last one will be the anechoic. There's no internal echo. All right. So the image will be a darker view in anechoic. Okay, these are some of the examples that the ultrasound beam use and it formed the uh, anechoic, hypoechoic or hyperechoic images. All right. So this is the real images of the ultrasound that we can detect over the ultrasound machine. So here in anechoic or black, a structure here you can see is a bladder okay or anything fluid filled like cysts blood vessels and others in hypoechoic a darker view in patient that may have a, some kind of tumor or lymph nodes and then in hypoechoic the brighter version or images in fat tissue or stones how to interpret the ultrasound images, all right? In fast scan, as I mentioned, the first one will be the right upper quadrant. So the right upper quadrant, usually the probe is put over the mid axillary region, over the right mid axillary region. Uh, and then we can, we should identify the structure on the images. First, we should see the liver. Here is the liver, and then next to the liver, there's a right kidney. So here in the right upper quadrant, we should see these two landmark organs so that we can say it's an adequate view. So here in the right upper quadrant, the thing that we should see is, first is the hepatorenal space or the Morrison's pouch here in between the liver and also the kidney. The next one will be the tip of the liver here. Okay, at the tip of the liver. And then the last one will be the sub here. Okay, there's some study says in fast scan, in the right upper quadrant area, the first presentation of fluid is usually at the tip of the liver. So it is very important for us 
to do the fast scan and detect the tip of the liver as the intra-abdominal free fluid can firstly presented here in this area. Okay, these are the example of images with some abnormalities. So we can see here there is some free fluids that present in between the liver and also the kidney, the right kidney. So here we can say that there's a, some free fluids present in the Morrison's pouch. Okay. How about this? So in, in this picture, we can see that there's a present of the free fluids in the Morrison's pouch and also at the tip of the liver. So if the patient come due to the trauma, so we must make sure that this patient being referred to the surgical team for further intervention, or maybe for some continuation of the care. Okay, here is stated as a free fluids. And then how about the left upper quadrant? So in the left upper quadrant, the landmark organ is the spleen and also the kidney. Okay, so in the left upper quadrant, usually we put the probe horizontally over the posterior, left posterior mid axillary line, posterior axillary line, and then we can see these images. So here we can see there's a presentation of the spleen and also the kidney, the left kidney. So here, the things that we should take, uh, take note is the area between the spleen and also the left kidney or known as the splenorenal renal space and then the next area will be the tip of the spleen here and then the last one will be the sub here okay so in the left upper quadrant it says that the first presentation of the free fluid is is over the subdiaphragmatic area compared to the right upper quadrant. The first presentation of the free fluid, free fluid is over the tip of the liver. Okay, these are some of the example uh, of free fluids that present over the spinal renal space here, and then over the subdiaphragmatic region here. And then the next one will be the Suprapubic, okay, in suprapubic uh, area, okay, actually we want to look for the free fluid at the potential space. So for male, the, the thing, the, uh, the space that we want to detect is the rectovesical space. And then for female, is the caldicep space, all right? Okay, I will explain in details about this. So here in males, we can see there's a, over the suprapubic re, uh, region, when we put the transducer horizontally, we can see the images of the bladder. So it is very important uh, for patient to have a full bladder before doing this examination, because by doing that, we can, we can detect the anatomically, uh, anatomy uh, more accurately. So here is the bladder, and then below the bladder, we can see there's a presentation of the prostate in males, and then behind it is a rectum. So usually the free fluids will accumulate in between the bladder and also the prostate in males. But for females, we should detect the bladder and also the uterus. Okay. So the area of our concern is the porch of Douglas here, and then in between the bladder and also the uterus. All right. So there are two main sites of the presentation of free fluid in the females. Okay. As I mentioned previously, this is how it looks. Okay. So this is a bladder, and then this is the uterus. Next is the rectum here, and then behind it is a porch of Douglas. And over the left side here, there's the images of the bowel. So we can see here, there's some kind of free fluid in the porch of Douglas here. So this is the abnormal finding in fast scan.
Okay, these are the other example or video images taken. All right, in the supra pubic area, you can see here there's some presentation of the free fluids next to the bladder. All right. Okay, here they also uh, show some of the abnormalities of the finding. Like in this picture, we can see there's a presentation of the free fluids in between the bladder and the prostate. Okay, so these are the abnormal findings. And then here, there's also some abnormal finding in between the bladder and also the prostate, in which as the same as the images on the left side, the presentation of the free fluids. There's two regions here. All right. Okay, other than that, okay, in the supra pubic area, we can see if the free fluid is large enough or massive enough, it will form like this, okay? So the free fluid will be accumulated in certain areas. And then here we can see the presentation of the free fluids in the posh of Douglas. See, you can see here the massive free fluids presented in this area. Okay. And for here, we can see the free fluid is presented in the female in between the bladder and also the uterus. And then over the posh of Douglas. The next view will be the sub zephyr or subcostal view. Okay, so here basically we put our transducer over the sub zephyr region, and then this probe, uh, the markers, we should uh, mark the markers towards the right side of the shoulder of the patient, and then usually we will tilt the probe like 15 degree to, to have a good image. So when we do that, we can see basically in the side default area, there's a presentation of the liver and also the heart. Okay, we can see here the, the heart is contracting. Okay, and then here closest to the heart is the structure of right atrium and also the right ventricles. So in between the liver and also the heart, here there's a precardial set. So any free fluids or any precardial effusion, the free fluid will be accumulated here in between this area, the heart and so the liver. Okay. So by doing the fast scan, if the patient come to us in unstable, and then when we do the sub default uh, fast scan, it shows some precardial effusion or worse, it come the tamponade. So we might need to intervene earlier so that the patient can be stabilized. Okay, these are some of the example of the abnormal view in the sub default region. Okay, so here we can see the structure of the heart and also the liver. And then here we can see there's a, a presentation of precardial effusions in the precardial sac. All right. So in between the liver and also the heart. Okay. Sometimes this view is quite difficult to, to be obtained. It depends on the uh, constitutional or the body of the, I mean, the patient. And so it's very, uh, it needs a skills to do this. Sometimes it's very difficult to, 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 to detect. And then I will talk a little bit on e -fast. It's just the uh, actually e fast stands for extended uh, fast scan. Uh, it is a modified form of the fast scan. It's just the inclusion of the lung scan in aiming to aid in the faster diagnosis of hemothorax and pneumothorax in the trauma cases. So as I mentioned earlier, in fast scan there are four main components: the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, suprapubic, and also the subzephyr region. And then for e fast is just the extension of the fast in which we put additional right anterior chest and also the left anterior chest 
for the place of examination. All right. Okay, for E fast, okay. The other things about E fast in the right upper quadrant view, we can uh, we can also detect some kind of pleural effusions at the base of the lung. Okay. So in here, in these images, we can see when we when we put our probe more carefully towards the, the head of the patient, we can see the structure here, the liver, the spine, and so the diaphragm. Okay. Here we can see there's no effusion or precarded effusion. Or sorry, pleural effusion. But here we can see that uh, there's a, some presentation of the pleural effusion and there's a, a sign called a spine sign. Normally we cannot, we cannot see any spine uh, images on the ultrasound in a normal patient. But if the spine sign is positive, meaning there is some kind of presentation of pleural effusions. Okay. Okay, the spine sign is only an extension of spine mirroring the beyond the diaphragm superiorly. Okay, so as we can see here, this is the lung. Okay, and then there is some pleural, there's a collection inside the pleural, pleural space. Okay, there's some pleural effusions here. And then here we can see there's a spine. Okay, this is called as a spine sign. How about the lung ultrasound in e -fast? Okay, basically, these are two main areas that we do the ultrasound. So, in this view, usually we'll, we will be using the curvy linear probe or the linear probe to have a better image. Alright, so as we can see here, uh, by doing the lung ultrasound uh, with, in trauma patient, we should be able to detect is there any presentation of pneumothorax. Okay, so here we can see here there's a rib here, there's a rib shadow over the left side of the image and also the right side of the image. And in between the rib, there's a pleural line here. Okay, it's hyperechogenic. All right, so this pleural line basically we want to detect is there any presentation of the sliding. So because the pleura is consists of visceral and also parietal. And then in between this pleural line, we can see in the normal version of patient, the sliding will be presented. But in the patient that we are suspicious for pneumothorax, usually the sliding sign is absent. And then the other thing is we can see there is no presentation of the comet tail of the B profile here, B, B lines, so that it raises our suspicion for patient having pneumothorax. Okay, and then the other thing about the lung ultrasound in e -fast is we can also use the M mode in the ultrasound machine. We can change to the M mode and then we put the markers of the M mode over the plural line. Okay, and then from here, uh, by doing this, we can see in the normal lung with no pneumothorax, we can see there's a seashore sign. You can see here the images become like seashore. Okay, this is like a sea, and then this is a seashore. All right, shore. Okay, it's like a, a beach. So if the during the during the uh, examination of the lung at the sun, uh, in the M mode, and then we cannot see any no any any motion or the absence of the sliding scale. And then by doing the M mode, we can see there's a presentation of barco or stratosphere sign. Okay, here the images like uh, barco or stratosphere sign. Eh? So meaning here, the, uh, the patient might have some type of pneumothorax. Okay, as uh, to, to end my slides, so uh, there's some saying says that ultrasound is an invaluable third eye, but it can't see everything. Okay. So as a conclusion, ultrasound is very, very good tool, especially in our emergency department, uh, so that we can use this tool to diagnose the patient, especially if 
trauma patient uh, in which we can detect is there any intra-abdominal free food or maybe some kind of pericardial effusion in which the patient might come uh, with life threatening uh, injury. So uh, before I end my slide, these are some of the references that I took for my slide. All right. So with that, I thank you. So I pass back to the uh, person in charge. Thank you very much, Dr. Nath. For audience that don't have microphone, you can type your question in the chat box and we will read it to the our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Nazra, we have one question from uh, uh, Sister Farin Najiha. Is there any measurement of the free fluid to consider as significant? Okay, thank you for the question, uh, Sister Farin Najiha. So the question is, is there any measurement of the free fluid to consider as significant? So basically, as I mentioned earlier in the slide, the fast scan, basically, uh, we can only detect the free fluids if it's uh, up to 250 ml of uh, volume. So, meaning is that there is no specific measurement of the free fluid to consider as insignificant. So, we, we didn't use any measurement, basically, in fast scan. It's just the negative or positive finding. Hope that answers my questions. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, we still open the floor for any question to Doctor Nazra. Dr. Nazro, we do have another question. What's the medical legal impact of focus in ED? From Dr. Nazhan Afif. OK, 
Okay, thank you Dr. Nazahan Afif for the question. What's the medical legal impact of focus in emergency department? So as for my experience, so basically uh, by doing the focus in emergency department, we can actually do the, I mean, we can have a better management of the patients. So I think in terms of medical legal impact uh, of focus, uh, there's uh, maybe few medical legal impact. Uh, I cannot I cannot say it, uh, basically because I haven't uh, I haven't encountered such a, such a medical legal impact before by doing the focus in emergency department. Uh, maybe uh, by doing the focus in emergency department, if the the doctors or the uh, or the the one that do the examination. Uh, didn't do the didn't do the I mean the the examination correctly or maybe causes some harm to the patient maybe it can contribute to the some kind of medical legal impact of, by doing the focus in emergency department so for this question I cannot answer uh, truly because based on my experience I haven't I haven't encountered such such issues sorry for that. Okay, Doctor, I think so far there's no longer question. Uh, maybe if you have uh, any contact number or any email, if uh, later on our participant do have question to ask you later. Yeah, uh, I, will, I will share my contact number or my email here. Should I okay. share it over here? Uh, I type the message. I think you can put in the chat box. Sorry. Okay, Doctor. Uh, thank you again for a very interesting topic for today, CME. I would like to remind the participant to again uh, register your attendee in the IITENS and for medical practitioner to fill in the Google form through the link given. We end our CME today with Tasbih Kafarah and Suratul Ans. Again, we thank you for the audience participating our CME today. Thank you.